So tucked into this shed is a It looks pretty good. Just like that. reuse so so we're gonna so I'm finally getting around to making another video of the farm all am the first video did really well so thank you to everyone for watching that one and thank you for tuning back into this one if you follow me on TikTok, you'll know that I finished fully restoring this tractor for the Chevron Tractor Restoration Competition. I have about 12 hours of footage on this tractor, so the next couple videos will be about the restoration process. This video will be about assembling the engine, getting the pistons in and the oil pan and timing cover and stuff on, as well as disassembling the transmission. Then in the next video, we'll finish putting the engine together and put the transmission together. We'll just have to see how it plans, plans out, though because I don't want these videos to be like three hours long, but I also don't want to leave too much of it out. So this tool is a stud remover. It has this cam that has teeth on it, and it, as you turn it, it bites into the stud harder. It works very well for removing these head studs. And this one's coming right out. So these pins aren't too worn out, but I'll probably get new ones. And then, where they go in here is pretty worn out, so I'll probably get, what? probably buy some bushings.
here's the inside of the transmission, which is very rusty. Oh, look at that. That got a bearing now. All the starters are pretty bulletproof in these tractors. Although I did say I have like 12 hours of footage on this tractor, that doesn't include the video on an SD card, which in my infinite wisdom I put in my pocket where it disappeared forever. But all you, here I got pictures of the stuff that you missed. Here's pulling the engine. Uh, I took the flywheel off. Then I got a nice two-ton engine stand from Harbor Freight, which worked really well. And then we pulled the connect the rotating assembly outside so that we could pressure wash the block before bringing it inside. You see knocking the pistons out. And here are all the pistons and caps. And we're going to cut to removing the sleeves. All right, I just made that little puck to drive out the old sleeves. Just have to be careful not to scratch the cylinder wall with it. There's uh, one sleeve. This one's actually in pretty good shape. You could honestly probably clean this up and reuse it. It's a standard bore. Here's the last sleeve, number three. Uh, it's important with these dry sleeves, you don't want there to be galling. What that is is where material from either the block or the sleeve sticks onto the block. And when you drive it out, that material gets clogged up in there and starts to cause scoring and, and just tear off even more material. Um, what machine shops will do, my friend uh, Jamzy Online, he, what they do is they bore them out till they're paper thin. You can just stick a pick in there and the, the thing, the whole liner just peels out. I'm gonna use one of these hones just to clean up in there. And that's how they look after the home. So we're not trying to take off any material, we're just trying to take off that little bit of gunk that built up between the old sleeve and cylinder. And that'll help prevent galling, installing the new sleeves, and just make it go a lot smoother. All right, here's the first sleeve. It's been in the freezer. Alright, we got the old one out. You can see it just cracked right off. I don't know how that happened. It'd be one thing if like a piece of this chipped off. But the whole thing. Maybe I hit it too hard at the end there.
I just figured out that I may have lost an SD card. Some genius thought it was a good idea to put it in his pocket and it came out of my pocket when I took my phone out and it's on the ground somewhere. So here's what you missed. This is all stuff I've talked about in other videos, but I put the rod piston assemblies together, plastic gauged the rod and main journals on the crank. They all looked good and then use that ring compressor to tap the pistons in and everything went smooth. For these water jacket covers, you just put silicone on both sides and use the gasket. Just the gasket is not sufficient to seal these. These covers warp and they get pitted and stuff. Just be careful you don't over tighten these bolts because you can push the gasket out, blow the gasket out the side. All right, the, these gaskets I just put the high tack gasket adhesive and then that that's fine. All pins lined up. There's two dots that have to be lined up. Got the felt installed in the rear main seal housing. It's not too bad. You just have to be careful. You have to get the whole the felt all the way in, all the way deep. So I used a couple a pick or you could use a screwdriver to just guide it in and I soaked it in oil before installing and when you cut the excess you want to make sure you leave some because that felt is going to shrink a little bit now I have a little bit of RTV silicone where the gasket goes Looks like they want you to use these rubber deals. Now let's install the lifters. Have them organized here. Front of the engine, rear of the engine. And I doubt these lifters are gonna fall, but I guess the point of this metal is to keep them in there. Put the front main seal installed. I'm ready to put the timing cover on. Just took the cover off the governor. It looks good. Here's the gasket. Comes in the gasket kit. And now I'm gonna install the governor and put a little bit of the high tack sealant on the gasket. Now I'm going to put the head studs in, a pit sealant on the ones on the holes that go all the way through. And there's two that are longer and they go here.
new lock washers on the bolts. I have the surface here all cleaned up and degreased. Now we're ready to put the oil pan on. I'm gonna use a little bit of silicone in addition to the cork gasket. You especially want silicone on these joints and at the timing cover joint. Got all the bolts tightened down. I'm gonna come back and tighten them more once the sealant dries. Now let's put the lifter cover on. Now let's get into taking this rear end and transmission apart. So if you haven't already, grab yourself a cold snack and sit back because this is when it gets interesting. We're gonna need a new pivot shaft. That brake lining looks pretty good. Could probably reuse it. that the brakes are out of the way, we can get the transmission cover off. All right, this cover is really heavy, so here's how I have it rigged up. Engine hoist. I just have one lifting eye going to the middle there and the strap. And if it's off balance, I, that should be pretty balanced there, but if it's off balance, I can put that eye there and then a ratchet strap up to the hook. All right, here's the transmission. Here's the cover. Cover looks in good condition. All the detents for the shift yokes work. And the shift yokes look pretty good. They're not too worn down. I don't, I don't see any cracks, breaks, or repairs. So I'll probably just leave that alone. There's nothing wrong with it. As for the rest of the transmission, it's quite rusty, which is concerning because we're gonna have to clean all of these gears off. But the main problem is with the differential here, the pinion gear has too much free play. So I have the dial indicator set up here. You can see there's about 32 thousandths of free play, which is I haven't looked at the manual, but I'm pretty sure that's excessive. Well, I found a major problem with this transmission while I was cleaning it up. Get the light on. So that bearing for the lower shaft, which I'm, which I'm spinning right now, you can see the shaft spinning, but the inner race of that bearing is still. The inner race is not moving, and now it is a little, but. I could spin this shaft all the way around and that inner race will move a sixteenth of a turn. That's a big problem. That means that that, that counter shaft 
spun inside the bearing and is worn down. If I were to run this tractor with that bearing like that, it would tear up the bearing. It will cause the alignment of the countershaft to be wrong. It'll start popping out of gears. PTO won't line up. You won't be able to get the shifter in and a whole host of other problems. So that is a has to be taken care of. I already got the input shaft off here. Pretty simple. I'm gonna have to get new ones of these rubber isolators. They're very worn down. For the input shaft looks fine see if I can find a number on it and I'll probably get a new one while I'm in here you get a new one of these gears because that one's very corroded you could listen to that bearing that bearings full of pitting and that's gonna make a horrible noise when the end Listen to that. That is just going to be screaming if you were to. Anytime the engine was, would be running with the clutch engaged. Now you can really see that bearing. race there. See it spins a little bit, but that's not good. Counter shaft off. Got to take off the drive link coupler for the PTO, I mean for the hydraulics. So my little tool is coming in handy again. As if things could get much worse. This bearing is spinning in the bore. see this bearing is spinning on the shaft so we have to get this one apart also I already have the new inner axle bearing and the differential carrier on so now we can slide the axle and get the outer bearing on here is the old inner axle bearing you can see the cage broke at some point and it's missing a few balls I actually did find some piece of metal in the bottom of the transmission and I'll I'm sure this is where they came from. And here's a better look at the new bearings in the differential carrier. On the other side, I left the bearings alone because they looked fine. That's all for this part, so thank you for watching. As for the restoration competition, they actually just released the finalists, and I'm one of them. So I will be giving a presentation in front of judges in Indianapolis in November, and then they'll decide who wins and gets second place and everything but there still is a fan favorite vote going on which ends at the end of october so you can go vote for me if you want i put the link down below to where you go you have to make an account and then you can vote three times a day so if you do that that's good but thank you for watching and voting if you do and stay tuned for the next one coming real soon